Hello, this is Christine. I'm a deaf woman. I have cancer. When I told my family members about this opportunity to do Hear Me Now, most people are like, wait a minute, they've never heard about a perspective of a deaf person with cancer and going through the medical field. So I asked my good friend, Sarah, to be involved with this too, because we've known each other for several years. And so it would be a very easy conversation to have with each other. And this is Sarah. Um, and I'm going to be the voice of both Christine and myself because I'm also an interpreter in addition to a friend of Christine. And we've known each other for a long time and we've shared lots of good times and difficult times. And I look forward to just hearing about and talking to you about your perspective and experience of going through that medical field with, with your experience with cancer and recovery and continued recovery, I hope. <laughs> Christine saying hope too. Oh, my journey's not over yet, but it's getting there. And I have noticed some things are getting much better now. So it continues. And Sarah is saying, I just know from other friends who have brought like their deaf kids to the doctor or a clinic or the ER. And it's like, I had one friend who brought in the ER for a broken arm. And the first question from the doctor's mouth was, so how did your son become deaf? <laughs> My friend's like, it doesn't matter. Look at his arm. It, I'm not asking you to diagnose his deafness or deal with that. Move on. Let's focus on what the need is. And Christine is like, yes. At one time, I went to the ER with an issue with my knee. And I had a good friend that came with me. And there's this kind of unspoken rule in the deaf community that I would never tell my friend that, you know, your voice isn't very clear, it's not very good. It, that's considered rude and mean to and judgmental. So I didn't say anything like that. But my friend was thinking that she was speaking clearly. Anyway, I, I kind of discouraged her from talking to the doctor because the doctor came in and said, like, oh, and he saw and talked to the two of us. And then he labeled us and assumed we were mentally retarded. I was like, what? Wait a minute. That's got nothing to do with my knee issue. And it was because of my friend speaking her best, but she didn't realize she wasn't clear. And the doctor just, because of that one thing, assumed we were both mentally retarded. Ugh. And Christine, Sarah is asking, Christine, has, do you feel like the, if you went to the ER today, would it be a better experience? Christine's saying, oh yes, now it's a much better experience. And so far, I mean, I've had some struggles. I've had to stand up for myself, I had to advocate. I've had some discussions with the staff. Sometimes I got angry, but I did get what I need. I mean, it's, it's, I, and I've still got a way, the whole profession's got a long way to go. And also, and this is Sarah, that sometimes it seems that when you have a deaf person, it might take a little bit longer. And part of it is just the language. And even if you have an interpreter, sometimes it does take a little bit more time. So try to be a little bit flexible with the schedule. And Christina is nodding strongly, yes. And it also helps if you give any notes. Don't You don't have to write down like on, um, you don't have to, you don't need to give me the notes like this coloring, like, like a coloring book. It's like, you know, no. But just give me some nice professional notes. That would be very helpful. Oh, and Sarah's adding, oh, you mentioned earlier about sounds, to make sounds visible, but also anything visual. If you're trying to talk about something abstract, 
if you have a picture in your office or in a book or something. And Christine is adding, yes. For example, like if you want to explain a concept of cancer, draw a picture and, and label the, you know, put the names on that. Because if you just throw it out and the interpreter spells out these different words, remember, we, we have to process the information. So it's going from English to ASL. And then I'm trying to, you know, get a new word and I'm trying to learn this. And it's very difficult. And it, it takes a lot of time for me to process that. So it'd be great to have the note with information, any drawings, with any labels, anything that you can make it visual would be so much helpful, so much better. And don't be afraid to use gestures. Uh, just try. I mean, if you feel comfortable with a patient enough, you can. I mean, maybe have fun with it. I mean, the way you can you can joke around and let us know that you see us as human beings and not as a machine. <laughs>